Welcome back. Just wanted to take a few minutes today to kind of highlight some of these devices I have here on my desk. I'm going to do separate videos and little mini groups on all of these. You can see there's some duplicate pieces of equipment here. Uh, we have some clamp meters, we have some different multimeters, there's some ohm meters here. And I'm going to do, like I said, little videos on each one of these to kind of highlight what they are, how they work. Some of these aren't in the uh, best condition, I'll say. So I'm gonna show you how to maybe restore them, test them to make sure they're working properly. You know, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll just take a quick walk around here. These are what's called circuit guards. This is actually a device that you would use um, kind of like a local circuit breaker. I think this is actually a ground fold as well. And you would just you know plug it in plug your device into here it's got a test and reset just like a typical ground fold except it's portable uh, i don't think i'll be able to open these up to show you what's inside of them though because they do have a special bit here it's one of those ones that once it's tightened it can't be untightened so i'm going to have to figure out how to get that one out we have a lamp tester this is used for testing the voltages of various fixtures you can either plug in leads down the bottom or there's an antenna up at the top here that you would take out and you would aim this towards a, you know a, like a fluorescent fixture I believe and push the button here and it would tell you you know the voltage I guess of the lamp whether it's 277 or 208 or those different you know voltages that they use in fluorescent lighting um, I have to say though a lot of these devices um, had batteries in them when they were put in storage years ago and uh, you know that caused a lot of uh, corrosion problems so that's some things I'm have to clean up um, don't know if they work or not you know that's one of those things it's going to be a, a fun video or a group of videos to do we have here these are some clamp meters some old school analog clamp meters with uh, a various ranges this does volts and amps it looks like kind of neat and maybe this is the one i can show you yeah you can see there's some of that corrosion in there not too bad but there is some, so we'll figure out how to neutralize that. I mean, this one still has the manual in it from back in the day. No idea what the age on these is. This is, uh, these are all my dad's old meters from back in the day when he was uh, an avid, an industrial electrician at a, a pharmaceutical manufacturing plant. This one's a newer one, it's digital. This one was the one I think had the most corrosion on it out of all of them. Yeah, you can see it's got the Sometimes it's called the green death. This one's got the blue death all over it. And so that's pretty uh, pretty skunky. So that one's going to have to get cleaned up really well. Then we have the Simpson brand of meters. That's what all these, uh, all these back here are. These are just your standard model 372 ohm meters. Now, the funny thing about these is I just did a quick search on these the other day when I actually got these in my hand. And they, they're actually selling them as, on Etsy as antique pieces of equipment, which I thought was kind of neat. You can see this one was, uh, this one was actually inscribed in the top as a spare parts unit. And it was in the box. The other ones here have their actual cases. These two units are actually the same as this. This one here is a little different. I actually really like the look of this one. It's a different model number. This is actually a CK08455L2. It's nice that they had these uh, leather cases like this back in the day. Again, I have no idea how old these are. Some of your, some of your older viewers might know. Once uh, I get the data sheets on it, so if I can even find anything, we'll definitely make that more knowledgeable, more, 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 more general knowledge for everyone. Uh, these are some of these uh, amp probe amp meters. This also has the same uh, range on it where it goes from amps to volts. Uh, I tried testing these out to see if they actually do anything and uh, they don't really do anything. So I gotta see if there's maybe batteries in them. I'm assuming there is, but I'm not really 100% sure. And that's basically what all these guys are over here. You can see there's uh, quite a few of those. And that leads me to pretty much the last one here, which is the Simpson 260 
Series 7P multimeter. This thing's a beast. It weighs a ton for uh, you know a device like this. And by the way, these are all these uh, Bakelite cases. You know, they're they're pretty neat. This one uh, I did have a poke around inside. You know, there's a couple batteries in there that I have to try to replace. Not too bad with this one. Some of these other ones. I don't remember which one it was, but they had one of these 45 volt B cell batteries, which is just always a, a fun thing. I just kind of held on to it and just kept it in a little Ziploc bag because you could see it's a little, little corroded, but I just figured I would show that to show what it looks like. You know, it has your typical nine volt battery snaps on the top here, if you can, you can see those. And uh, I thought that was kind of neat. Some of the other ones here actually had the battery soldered directly into it, which is, not a good thing in my opinion, but that's uh, that's what separates the technically inclined people from the general users. I guess the people who were using these things figured out how to solder the stuff in and out when you needed to change the battery, so it wasn't a big deal. Now, why are there so many of these duplicate pieces? Well, the particular shop he worked for uh, seemed to hand out a new model every year, and they didn't require you to turn in the old model either. So it's like, hey, here's this meter. Oh wait, remember that one we gave you last year? Yeah, here's a new one. And I guess they did that just to make sure the model, the, the units were accurate for whatever you know equipment they were testing with them, which kind of does make sense a little bit, but you know, it's kind of a waste if you ask me to, to buy a new one of these units every year. Um, you can see there are some other little bits and pieces here on my desk that I also picked up when I was over uh, at my dad's house. We, we, we have his uh, Fluke 77. This is the original 77 meter. I had done teardowns of this before. This is my go-to meter. I use this thing all the time. I love it. Um, he's used it for years and years. And I don't have any uh, reference equipment here to say if it's 100% accurate or not. But I would assume it is pretty damn accurate. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a good meter. And like I said, that's the original Fluke 77. I think they're up to like Mark five, six, seven, whatever it is. I don't really remember. They're not the cheapest thing, so I'm not gonna run out and go buy one of them right away. Although I would like one with a little bit more functionality to it that they haven't. Um, we have here some old Scotch 35 tape from the 3M company. And you can tell by the text on it, this is probably from 70s, 80s. I have no idea. I tried looking for a date code on it, couldn't find it. Um, this is actually the green tape for color coding. This isn't the 33 tape that they usually use. It's the 35 is a little different. It's colored basically. But look how pristine it is. It's like brand new. I haven't even tried unrolling it to see if the adhesive sticks to it because I have noticed sometimes with these older tapes, the adhesive tends to st not stick well to the actual tape and it comes off. But wow, it looks like it's brand new. I mean, it is. It's new old stock, but these little uh, plastic containers here really seem like they tape that uh, keep that tape really good um, we have these wire strippers now I did mention these briefly in another video you can see they have a uh, the more I play with them the better they are but they are sticking a little bit and you can see uh, the, the handles are just taped over I don't believe they had any um, insulation on them originally they may have it may have cracked off now what I did do is I bought a uh, I bought a container of Plastidip and what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart We're going to try to clean up all the rust on it, you know, hit it with some WD-40 the whole good stuff And then I'm going to dip these handles Maybe even paint the metal up here because it's all scratched up and I'm going to turn these into a Good working pair of automatic wire strippers I found a random pair of test leads with this little clamp on it. I'm sure this belongs to one of these meters here or maybe nothing at all. As I go dropping it on my floor. Uh, Klein Tools, you know, Klein Tools is a pretty pretty good brand. It's the uh, cheaper of the more expensive stuff, I think somebody told me. And this is just a regular actual metal tape measure. You know, you actually have to manually roll this in, which is cool. You know, the, the self, uh, Self-retracting tape measures are nice, but when you have one like this, you can just lay out and not have to worry about it coming back in or having the break not working on you. It works really well. Plus, it's thin. You know, it fits in the pocket nice. And this is one of those ones. No idea what the age on it is, but.
but it's lasted this long. It's a good quality tool. So I thought that was something kind of neat to show. We also have, uh, again, some more new old stock stuff. And this is uh, what my dad used to call books of numbers. This is just literally numbers that you would, like it shows here, wrap on the ends of wires. And in the terminal, you'd put a little sticker on there just to show you what wire goes to which terminal. This one I did have a poke at. Just open it up briefly. Just see, it's exactly what I said it was. Just a book of numbers. And they, they, you know, pages are sticking to each other just a little bit, as you can imagine from the age of this. But for the most part, they seem like they're in perfect shape. I'm, I'm sure you would be able to unstick these and stick them directly to a, a wire and have no problem with it. This is uh, definitely going to go out in my work van. And this one's actually numbers and letters and some symbols like plus and minus and uh, slash or stroke, depending on what country you're watching this in. And we also have uh, one of these buttons from Edwards. Now this has a tag on it, copyright 1929. I'm quite sure this is a lot newer than 1929, but it's just a simple, just push button, a desktop push button maybe for like a buzzer. I think this, this is like the moder modern equivalent of the little bell that the they would have on the desk of like the library, the little ding, you know, that little bell. This is probably the modern equivalent of that hooked up to some buzzer or something. Um, while I was there, I also went through his uh, bins of spade and you know, other connectors here and just took a bunch of those. I already have a section in the van set up where a little, little compartment for these. And it's nice just to have different sizes of them. Uh, you can see there's another one down here in the bottom. And pretty much that's it for the whole vintage uh, equipment here, I guess I could say. I'm just going to pan over real quick because we do have another other couple little things I could show you on the desk here. We'll call them um, upcoming projects. I have uh, two routers here. And uh, that's the black device in the top and the blue device in the middle. And the white device underneath that's actually a wireless access point but we're going to go take a poke around the side of those two guys there the the black one here is from cisco which used to be linksys and this is just a simple four port router you know wireless router with internal uh internal antennas on it but the idea is, is we're going to take a poke inside of this so you can see what it looks like inside since i do have the specialty security bits to get in it. And then we're gonna plug this in. We're gonna show you what the original firmware looks like. And then we're gonna load it with DDWRT, which is a custom firmware. And I already checked the model number out. I can do that with this. We also have the ever so classic WRT54G from Linksys. Now this was actually my family's first router. And they were having some problems with the Wi-Fi in their house just recently. And the cable company came by and uh, they beat me to it basically. They came by and they looked at it and they said, your router's no good, we'll replace the router free of charge, blah, 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 blah. They handed this to my parents and said, this isn't any good, but you wanna hold on to it, hold on to it. So we're gonna check that out and see if it is actually any good. Because this particular one has removable antennas on it. You actually just pop this off here and take the antenna off and you have yourself a nice antenna jack that you can do other things with, like put external antennas on it. And I've been looking around at roof mount antennas to maybe extend my wireless signal to my shed a little bit better. And some of the antennas I look at would probably cover the entire park here I live in. So I can actually take my cell phone, throw it in my pocket or my tablet and bring it with me if I want and walk around the park and listen to Pandora or whatever I want to do on Wi-Fi from my own house. And that's kind of the intention I have. The last device is a wireless access point, and that's actually going back to the owner. Um, somebody gave me the Cisco and the access point and said, I don't need these anymore. You can go ahead and take them. I don't want them. And then after I took a poke around at the access point, I realized that's so they can access their wireless security cameras in their house. And they probably need that back. So that's, that's going back, obviously. Um, a quick note about the whole DDWRT thing, since I mentioned it. Um, you have software, you have hardware. So your computer is hardware and software would be like Windows and Office and all those things that run on it. But you also have firmware. Firmware is that piece of software 
that the chips on your computer run. So for example, your CD-ROM drive, the circuitry inside that drive, the circuitry within that makes that hardware up, has firmware running on it. And that firmware dictates what you know speed the drive might run at or the data rate it transfers the stuff to the computer. There's all different things that that firmware does. Your router, which is again a piece of hardware, has firmware running on it. And that firmware sets up the IP addresses for your computer, it does a firewall, it does all that stuff. DDWRT is a custom version of firmware that some company, person, whatever developed, and then they kind of custom tuned it for the individual hardware on each of these devices. I personally um, bought one of these when I moved into this location and converted that to DDWRT. It worked great and then somebody handed me a uh, another router which my memory is escaping me right now as to which brand it is so I'm just going to kind of look over the camera here. It is a Netgear router and that particular router had a USB port in the back of it that was meant to be used as a, a network attached to storage device and that device with the new DDWRT build now can use that USB port as a print server in addition to using it as a file server. So I have uh, additional functionality to it. And I also, I haven't confirmed it, but it also seems like due to the color of the status lights for each individual port, which by the way, these are the status lights. They usually light up green. Um, judging by the color of the status ports now, it, uh, it seems like I'm getting different speeds out of the actual router. It used to be what's called a 10100 speed router. And most of the devices here are gigabit speed, which is a thousand. So 10100, 1000, think of it like that. Um, I have a gigabit switch that I use for the faster computers, but it seems like the gigabit devices that I plugged into the router are actually reading at gigabit speeds, where before they didn't do that. So that might be something that that firmware is, is doing. I haven't really put much thought into it until just recently. Um, so I'll have to take a poke around that too and, and perhaps maybe I'll disconnect it and show it to you when I, when I do these two devices. But anyway, that's all I really wanted to show. Um, I did a video upload this last, Thursday, uh, this last Tuesday and um, a couple of videos prior to that, I mentioned that I wanted to try doing video uploads every Tuesday with the possibility of doing one every Thursday. Well, today is Thursday. I did have a few minutes to do this video before I went to work. So I'm going to try to plug this camera in, do the uh, quick video editing, and upload to YouTube for availability tonight. So if you are watching this right now, this was shot this morning, and here it is nighttime, I guess, if you're watching this. And uh, hopefully that'll all work out. And uh, next week I'm actually on vacation from my normal job. I have a little camping trip planned on towards the end of the week. And I, I do have another channel here on YouTube. I will put the description, uh, the link in the description below as I usually do with my stuff here. And that's just a, a very small channel. Um, I used to make music, so just a couple music videos on there. I go on hiking trips, I go on camping trips, so the footage from that is also on there. This new camping trip, I'm quite sure I'll take footage of and that'll be on there. Um, I'm, I'm not asking all my followers to go check out that channel because it is different. It's more, like I said, a personal channel. You know, I'm trying to keep this particular channel more technological, technology-based, I'll, I'll say. But the other one is more personal stuff. I was mentioning doing blogging on there, not sure if I'll do that. Um, yeah. Anyway, let me uh, let me get this video edited so I can get to work on time, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.